I am not a Christian, so I may not be in a position to understand this. But if Donald Trump was selected by God, as you are certain that he was, why would God allow Joe Biden to even become president and force you to go through all of this? Why not just put Trump in the White House again? David Pakman recently debated Mike Linda, founder of My Pillow, who some people jokingly call Mike Pillow. In this section of the debate, they dive into some pretty interesting topics, God intervention and Donald Trump. As you can imagine, the conversation was both entertaining and a bit out. David Pakman kept things grounded and stuck to the facts, while Lindell shared some unique, unexpected. We're going to go through a few key moments from the debate, and I'll also share some of my thoughts along the way. So let's dive into these clips and see how it all played out. Well, I believe I believe that that's uh, that's part of this divine divine thing that's going on because really? people don't look, let me tell you, people do not look for hope unless things are going bad. Huh. And this that's why I believe this will be the greatest revival for Jesus and we will be once again one nation under God ever because all these people, including yourself, are going to see miracles unfold here. Mike, and are you saying are even ev ev even say, even a Jewish guy like me will see Jesus? Okay. What's that? Even a Jewish guy see, like me. You're going to see miracles. You're going to okay. see miracles Please, unfold. Boy. You're going to see miracles unfold. You can believe whatever you want, but you're going to see things that you thought were impossible okay. happen. And you're saying, you asked me, why would God? But why would God let this happen? Yeah. Well, if you don't, people don't look for, I'll, I'll give an example. Um, I was in a, you know, I was in about two years ago, I was with a guy and he said, and he goes, Mike, our nation has turned its back on God. People have turned its back on him. And he says, we would need, people aren't looking for God unless things bad happen. And he said, he goes, if something like the Great Depression, I said, no, no, in the Great Depression, they had God. They were just praying for food and shelter. Mm. I said, we have something better than that. Mm. I said, we have addiction. I said, so this is when I set up my Lindell Recovery Network. Or I said, when you're in addiction, you're looking for hope. You're looking out there. You need, and it's about your soul. It's about salvation. You're praying. Okay. But then along came the China virus, the pandemic, and then came this election. Everybody, everybody is seeing what is going on now. I have Democrat friends of mine and liberal friends of mine. I talk to them and they go, wow, wow. I can't believe this. Mike, you were right. This is a manifestation of socialism. I'm not blaming the Democrat Party. I'm saying that the China picked them. I want to pause here for a moment in the middle of Mike Lindell's commentary because David Pakman raises a really interesting point. It's something I've wondered myself. If people say that Donald Trump was chosen by God to be president, how do they explain what happened during Joe Biden's term? Was this part of a larger plan? Did God step back for a bit, intending for people to fully appreciate Trump later on? Lindell seems to suggest that we need to experience the bad to truly understand the good. But if Donald Trump was God's chosen leader, wouldn't it make more sense for things to be good all the time? And if Trump's leadership was part of a divine plan, why not just have him lead for life, ensuring continuous greatness? This conversation also reminds me of something I heard recently about an angel protecting Donald Trump when he was grazed by a bullet. The question arises, if divine protection was at play, why allow the bullet to even reach Trump's ear. Why not prevent the shooter's weapon from working altogether? Or better yet, stop the shooter before they even arrived at the rally? It raises a lot of questions. If divine intervention was focused solely on protecting Trump, what about others nearby, like the man behind Trump who was fatally injured? Why would the protection extend only to Trump and not to those around him? These ideas seem like logical puzzles that are difficult to reconcile. As for Mike Lindell, I have to say that his worldview can come across as deeply confusing. While his passion is clear, some of his statements raise serious questions and don't seem to align logic. And when Jimmy Kimball said to me at in his attack, he said, Mike, would you do it if it was reversed? I said, of course, this isn't about Donald Trump. I said, this is about saving our country with, with China and these machines. This is about saving not just our country, but the world. All these other countries are worried too. They got, we are in an age where it's cyber attacks. This yeah. is computers that can take your country. And I, and I said, and you know what happened after that? They came back, the Washington Post and all these outlets came to Minnesota and asked my friends and people from my past, come on, would Mike really be sounding the alarm if Donald Trump, had, if they'd have picked him, trying to pick him? Every one of them said, yes, David. Do you think they did a story on that? No. Wow. Every one of them, because you know what? This is about our country. This is about elections. I don't, it doesn't matter who won or lost it. It's it, when your vote didn't matter and you're going to see that at the cyber symposium, Whoa. nobody's vote mattered during that. Nobody's vote mattered. They used the 2010 census report. That's why you have so many rural counties where double the people voted that even live in the county. 
And this was all, these are done on a so, total separate thing here with mathematics yeah. that, uh, that we could not approve this. Mike, there's this incredible image of you in the aftermath of the election, leaving the White House and a zoomed in picture sees you carrying a paper that says martial law on it. Who right. raised the topic of martial law in that meeting with Trump? Well, let me see. Now, if you'd have done your due diligence on that, David, I said I was bringing him the evidence I got on January 9th, this cyber evidence that I got brought to me on January 9th. OK, that was four pages. These other lawyers had given me two pages to give to him. I had never even read it. I didn't know what was on it. That got opened up. It never got talked about in the Oval Office. That's a very famous story there. I brought in the evidence. This is why I'm asking you. Yeah. Yeah. But he said, bring this upstairs. The lawyers brought me upstairs. Now the sheets were over. They gave me the sheets back and I was outside the back end. And then they seen that martial law in there. Uh, it was never brought up in the Oval Office. It was okay. in, and he didn't. And the sheets were given back and I brought upstairs to his attorneys, which shooed me out of the White House. OK, that's why I'm asking to get the right, story right. straight from you. Two other but, real. But, yeah. You know what? Yes. But that was so important. You know why? Yeah. Here's a polished neutral rewrite. I have to pause here point out the expression on David Pakman's face during this moment. You can tell he's fully aware that he could easily counter Mike Lindell's points, but he seems to hold back, possibly out of concern that engaging too forceful wouldn't be fair. It's as if Pakman recognizes that going too hard in this situation might come across as unnecessary. As unnecessary. This moment also makes you reflect on the people Donald Trump surrounded himself in his time in office. As president, Trump had access to top experts from across the country on the world, yet he chose to rely on individuals like Linda. If Trump were to return to office, it's unlikely we'd see more traditional figures like Rex Tillerson, despite his flaws. Instead, it raises the possibility of Trump leaning even more unconventional figures like Linda, which could shape the kind of leadership a second administration. They attacked Mike Lindell, my pillow, Dominion sued over 200 people yep. and, or, and used lawfare in our country to where last week I just had to dump Fox. Shame on Fox News. I've had to use all the left wing media every day. They have my direct number. I get calls from morning to night. But okay. you know what? They bash me and they attack me. But at least I get to talk about the truth, which is China attacked our country Whoa. and stole our election from the American Whoa. people. Last two things. One, do you have voting machines in your possession somewhere? Two. Yes, we do. You do. And how many of them? I don't know that. I don't know that. They, if they, uh, I have no idea. We're bringing. We're going to have. That's nothing. We're going to have at the cyber symposium. We're going to show you mock elections. We're going to have cy random cyber people put in a soundproof room. We're going to capture the packets which are in the routers. Of course. That's why Arizona won't give up the routers. Strong that's routers. Yeah. Give, you know. Where so did you get the voting routers. machines? Where did you get them? I'm, I don't know. Lawyers got them. It, it, believe me, they were got legal. You can buy them on eBay. There. Okay. David, why don't you buy a couple? If you want to watch the. Yeah, I don't know how to. Head over to David Pakman's YouTube channel. The entire discussion is about 30 minutes long. This particular clip stood out to me because it really shows Pakman's strategy at play. He uses a rope a technique here, where he calmly listens, occasionally agreeing, and lets Mike Lindell continue speaking. Pakman's approach allows Lindell's stream of thoughts to unfold, highlighting how scattered and ungrounded some of his statements sound. It's remarkable that someone like Lindell known mostly for selling pillows, has had such close access to Donald Trump. It's even more concerning to think about the possibility of Lindell being involved in another Trump administration. No matter what people think of Kamala Harris or Joe Biden, the idea of Trump returning to office surrounded by individuals like Lindell is unsettling. What do you think about David Pakman's handling of Lindell in this debate? And what are your thoughts on the idea of divine intervention? this belief that Trump is God's chosen president. If that's true, why didn't Trump win a second term? Does it really make sense that we need difficult times to appreciate the good? Or should we just have great leadership all the time? Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on David Pakman, Mike Lindell, and the topics they discussed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. And I've got more content on the way. See you in the next video.